Now, you know, I don't know about you, but I have a computer, obviously. I have a keyboard. I have a mouse. And frankly, you know, I really can type in Google and find out just about anything I want to find out about the Bible, Christianity, Jesus, and everything that there is. So frankly, why are people inventing new things about the Bible when we already have all the old things about the Bible and they're coming up with new ideas that aren't true? That I don't really understand. That's partly why we are in the open Bible, so to speak, study, and we're using a new form of really bizarre idea, you know, behind looking at the scriptures called item specific examination of the scriptures. Item specific being that, well, it's an item and it's specific. It fits where it fits, where it fits the way it fits. In other words, the Bible says what it means, means what it says. It was written for a reason. The reason has itself in and of itself by way of who wrote it, because of why they wrote it, in the way that they wrote it, because it's written the way it is. Now, people like to come up with this idea that, well, now, it's true, it's written for a reason, and they had this reason of wanting to change it, so they changed the words. And they made it fit this way, or that way, or any way, or some way, but every way that you look at it. The Bible is a spiritual book. You can't understand it unless you have the Holy Spirit. So, if the Holy Spirit's going to interpret it, then I think he could take whatever it is that's out of the way and put it in the way so that if it was any way, that there should be some shape, form, or means that they tried to change it in any way or possibility of being distorted from what the original meaning was or the original interpretation, then I think that God himself, if he's God, if he has the Holy Spirit, if he says that he can send forth his word and accomplish his purposes without us having to do anything special without there being some kind of magical beads you know or some kind of like oh we got to drink something or we got to do something or put on some spiritual glasses in order to see what god's doing in order to understand that the reality of what god is is that because he's a spirit we have to worship him spirit and truth and we have to have the holy spirit inside so anyways that you back he's already taking care of those problems that we don't have to worry about them anyways why are we getting so wound up about king james niv New King James, Cambridge King James, 1989 King James, 2000 King James, 1960 times King James, copyrighted King James, copyrighted NASB, copyrighted this, that, and the other thing, and who really cares? If it's item specific, we're just going to read it. Seems simple to me. So, in our examination so far of the scriptures, we found, interesting enough, that Pastors have told us things that you really don't read there. Now, they've read it in church, but they said it was there. But when we got on our own by ourselves and read it, it isn't there. To give you a great example, we're still looking for the gap theory, and so far we can't fall into the gap because we haven't found a gap. There's no gap there. <laughs> Okay, so if I just read the Bible the way it's written, hmm, as it's written, meaning what it says and saying what it means and being what it is that God writes it so that we can understand it, I don't have a gap. I'm not missing anything. Because if I put a gap in there, then I could put all kinds of things in there. I could put a gap. I could put a multitude of years. I could say a day is as a thousand years, a thousand years as a day, so I could create in Genesis this whole idea of there being evolution inside of creation or creation inside of evolution. And we could devolve or evolve of what the scripture says by way of trying to make something there that isn't there. So because it isn't, why make it so? Let's stick with what is as it is the way it is, because it is. When Jesus said, I am, that kind of gave me the idea, because 
if you really read that word, I am, it wasn't a name, it was a verb. It was, I am that I am, or I will be what I will be to my people, I will be what I will be. So it's kind of like, okay, well, God didn't really have a name, but just say that I will be what I will be, or I am that I am has sent you. So kind of went, so that's not his name, but now we're going to say it's his name because in order to have something by which we can call the supreme being that we don't understand completely what the whole concept of God is because he's omnipresent and all we use all these omni words that aren't in the Bible because we only have these words to define some of the things that we think we understand about him, but we don't understand him because he's greater than we are and he created us. So we go ahead and invent all these other things so we try to make it into a theological premise so that we don't understand really what his name was because his name really isn't a name, but it's actually the entity that he is, that he is what he was and he has always has been, never will be and never shall be and doesn't change because he's always been the same. See how problematic that gets when you start talking theologically? See what I mean? No? I know. It's easier if you're just simple. Just read it. Don't change it. Don't rearrange it. That's what we do in the open Bible. We just read it as it is, the way it is, for what it is. So, in reading Genesis 1, we found out in 15 and 16, actually in 14 and 15, and God said, and we were dealing with that. God said, and then you can read that, and you can just discuss for yourself what you get out of it, and figure it out, and figure out what God said. But then we get down to verse 16, and we go into verse 16 and 17, which is what we're going to read tonight, today, right now. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. Now, there is a comma there, but we're going to stop there. Don't get a gap. <laughs> Just stop. So in verse 16, and God made. Now, we had been reading, and God said, and sometimes it happened. Now it says, and God made. So it's interesting, God made great lights. It's what it says. God made two great lights. So we have two great lights. What are those lights? It's interesting because they are two lights. Notice how he says this. Because I understand the moon, and I understand the sun, and I understand the moon reflects the sun, but these are two great lights. Wonder what's going on here. We don't add the sun and the moon yet, so don't you put it in there, and I won't, because we're only talking about two great lights. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night. He made stars also. Oh, we got stars now. See, we don't have the sun and the moon, but we do have the stars. So he created the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. Now, what light rules the greater day? I don't know. He hasn't called it what it is yet. What light rules the night? I don't know. He hasn't called it that yet. Whatever is ruling it is the lesser light. Whatever is ruling the day is the greater light. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the light. So, I'm not going to guess, and I'm not going to put words there, and I'm not going to put Jesus there. I'm just going to stick with the greater light is, what rules the day? The greater light. What rules the night? The lesser light. If you stick with what it says, you never get confused. If you said the moon, you're wrong. We haven't been told that yet. Stick with what you know and you never get in trouble. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven. Not heavens. The heaven. Now we read earlier how we got all confused about firmament. But then we solved it because it was like this firmament was separated from that firmament. And one firmament was called heaven and another firmament was called something else. So... Always remember, when you're reading, to read it in context so you don't try to mix up things and mix them together and then come up with a conclusion that you think you know, when if you really examined it further, you'd find out that you had added something to it that wasn't there in the first place. 
So when we read it, it says that God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also, and God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. So the greater light to rule the day was set in the heaven, the firmament of heaven, to give light upon the earth. The lesser light was set in the heaven, a firmament, the firmament of heaven, to give light upon the earth. So we know why God put them there partially. And let's just go ahead and be sneaky and say, let's read verse 18 since it was a comma. And we'll go right into it now. And to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness and God saw that it was good. So in verse 18, it says, and to rule over the day. So he gave the greater light to rule the day. And now it says, he set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And then he says, and to rule over the day. And over the night. And to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. So it sounds like mincing words when I say it's ruling over the day and it's ruling over the night or to divide the day from the, the light from the darkness but you have to separate the words if you're separating light from darkness that makes perfect sense but guess what if darkness wasn't separated or did not divide the light from the darkness then what do we have together? Can you have light and darkness together at the same time? Be careful. See, here we find in Genesis, God setting the light, the greater light, to rule the day, the lesser light to rule the night. And then we find in verse 19, or verse 18, to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness. To divide the light from the darkness. Because there is such a thing as ultraviolet light. There's such a thing as dark light. There's such a thing as, in physics, light that is darkness. Wow, wait a minute, can light have darkness? In physics, it can. When you start getting into quantum physics, you can start getting into the macro isolinear feelings or feelings uh, dis dissemination of how light exists and darkness can exist in the same spectrum, so to speak, but how would we have known that the two could exist or how could God have made a division between the two in a dimensional reality except that he had set it here and did it by putting the greater light to rule over and the lesser light to rule over and they do separate themselves in our spectrum within non-quantum physics and we can say that light is different than darkness. So it really gets interesting in some ways about the way that God chose certain words to fit right where they're supposed to be. Because then when someone came back and said to me about quantum physics and then went back into Genesis and says, Hey, you know what? Look at this. You know, that, that makes perfect sense because, you know, I'm a scientist and I study quantum physics and light can exist with darkness, but then when God separates it and divides it from separation between the two, that makes perfect sense because then the light and light speed and everything is judged by a certain amount of quantum, quantum uh, qualifying factors that we mathematically equate within a speed ratio spectrum as opposed to a light darkness spectrum. So then you are existing in a different sphere of reality that you're going to disseminate between the two so that you'd understand how and quickly this works within one area, but it doesn't work in another area, but the Bible already covers that so that it works in science and proves itself. And you go, what are you, uh, why are you getting all so complicated? Well, there was a man who sat down and figured out the dimensions that existed within physics and the law of dynamics within quantum physics without using mathematical equations. 
in the same sense that he used only the scriptures in order to prove what he speculated that there would be. Nachmanides, if I remember right. And he was a Jew. And he was a rabbi. Now it's interesting that he would come up with these kind of conclusions just by looking at the word the way it is. By reading it for what it says. By understanding it as it is, the way it is. And to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness and the God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. I know in reading this, item specific, it would be easy for me to tell you to remember all those quantum physics things and to you know know that Nachmanides created all these ideas and had all these things prior to the whole quantum physics that we now think we're so smart because we think we just now invented it, which we didn't, but we built upon other people's knowledge. But God never intended us to want to need or have to investigate to the nth degree mathematics or physics in order to come up with all these conclusions when we could accept the word for what it is. Because God already covered all the theory of quantum physics in just simply saying he divided the light from the darkness. He divided. Not that it could exist because we know it can exist. He proved that he chose to separate the two. And he did it by separating them to have the greater light to rule over the night of the day and the lesser light to rule over the night. So sticking with only knowing what we read, we enjoy the fact that we can trust the Word of God with a greater assurance than we can in the sciences that try to prove God exists because then they get into even bigger questions. So in all of that blah 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 talk that I gave you about light and dark and this and that and the other thing the most important thing to read is simply and God made two great lights as I would tell a grandchild he made two great lights two just two not three not four and he made two great lights the greater light to rule the day the lesser light to rule the night he made stars also when you look out at the sky, what greater light do you see? If by day, then you know it's the greater light. If by night, then you know it's the lesser night. And to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness and God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. It's interesting that if we just read it and if we just told a child that, they would never have a problem with sciences. Because you see, the scriptures are true, the sciences only prove it.